Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode 41 of Talk of Fame podcast. I'm Kylie. Today, we have on the lovely singer songwriter and model, Tavi Murray. Thank you so much for coming on, Tavi. I'm so happy to have you on. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So over the last two years, you've kind of been stuck in isolation. So what's something that you did kind of over the last two years that you wouldn't have time to really do before? So over the last two years, I've been able to really focus on the creative side of my music, which I've really appreciated. Like I've written a lot of songs um, and outside of like my career. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gotten to spend time with my family and my cat. I love my cat. He's my little child. Um, so he, I, as much as I'm sad that everything happened, you know, um, I'm thankful for that time that I got to spend focusing on my music and my family. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, well, like, the biggest part of quarantine is that you've been stuck at home. You weren't doing anything and they like everyone I think everyone felt that like what are we supposed to do like we're stuck at home like what are we supposed to do we can't see really our family like we can't really do anything we don't want to take the risk but how do you think songwriting has kind of changed since kind of COVID hit like how do you think in your, your opinion um like it's just given me the extra time like when things are busy it's so hard to have the time to sit and play piano and write and things are hectic it gives me a lot of time to like have some self-reflection mm -hmm. and um just think about things and it's helped me hone in my craft more well for sure like if it wasn't for quarantine i wouldn't have been able to do this type of thing like it's like the quarantine has like basically was hard and good for every everyone and both and good and bad for everyone so like, what was kind of the toughest part for you as like being home, being singing, songwriting, performing, and all those things? Like, what was kind of the hardest part about not performing and everything? Um, not performing was definitely hard. Uh, I love to share my music with other people, um, but I am thankful for um, social media. Like, I kind of have a love hate relationship with social media because, in a sense, I feel like it takes away from face-to-face -face yeah. contact with people but at the same time it's a great way with it not being able to go out it's a great way to still have communication with people and um get your stuff out there even if you're not able to go play shows yeah for sure like, social media i agree i do have a loving relationship like back then like social media was really not a thing back then so it's more like a face-to-face -face conversation now people are basically so like on technology, since technology has been grew since quarantine hit a little bit. But like, what is like, like, what's the biggest thing for you about like having social media and connecting with people? Like, what is like the main part for you about connecting with people since now like we're stuck at home and such social media has been the biggest part for everyone? So I love being able to still have contact, still talk to people and share my craft um and it also gives you a way to like message people and I've still been able to connect with um you know people through my social media even though I'm not in contact with a ton of other humans <laughs> I'm yeah. still able to like be around some that I've met through social media which I'm very thankful for um because I know this is a very lonely time for a lot of people um and I mean, it's been lonely for me as well, but um, social media has definitely helped me stay connected. Yeah, for sure. Like, so, like social media has definitely been a way, very kind of helpful for everyone. Like last year, before I even started singing, I started this in like April last year, before I even started this, like quarantine made me battle my whole life. Like I started with anxiety, depression, it was at my lowest because of quarantine and not seeing everybody, not doing things I used to do every day in my everyday life and so I was at the lowest point in my life to the point where I was like okay I don't think I'm gonna I can't be with this anymore like I'm done I just I want to quit and so like if it wasn't for basically all the positivity social media family friends like I wouldn't be here like there's some positives there's some heartbreakers I would say but like there's like 
quarantine has its good and its bad, but I'm just happy kind of things are clearing up a little bit and I can do things I like we can usually do on a normal day basis, basically. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that. Like, that's definitely been something that I've struggled with throughout my life lifetime and I know like it's it's already really hard being a teenage girl just in general and I can't even imagine going through that time of life with the quarantine and everything going on so I'm very sorry that that was something that was really hard on you well absolutely thanks so much as I kind of mentioned kind of before you are a singer songwriter what kind of made you want to start that it's been something like it wasn't a moment where I was like oh, I want to do this. It was just, when I was 12 years old, I wrote my first song and I didn't share my music with anyone for like a very long time because I was insecure about it. Um, I was always, in, I have dyslexia and ADHD, so I was always in special education classes. So writing was never something I ever thought I would be capable of doing. Um, but then I had been writing songs for a few years and when I was 14, I asked my parents for a keyboard and I literally put the keyboard inside my closet and that's where I would practice and write. Um, that opened up a whole new world of songwriting. And, <clears throat> but still like the only people that ever heard my songs were my family until I turned 18 and I moved out to California. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to share my music with people. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Like I was always like a very kind of shy kid as a little kid. Like I was always independent like reserved a little bit I was always in my own little kind of space and so mm -hmm. <laughs> at, once I came out with the podcast idea of, like my cousins are journalists for my local news station down here in Pennsylvania and so oh, wow. like, and so they kind of kind of started it off for me I was like how is a small town girl a very shy girl supposed to do a podcast like how is that that's not normal for me to do these all people know me as is a very kind of shy girl. People that basically grow with me and stuff. And I was like, um, like people, when people think of, it, of me doing it, they're like, um, random. That's ra <laughs> random. But then I was like, I grew out of really getting confidence. I was like, if I don't like it, I might as well just do it. Because I always wanted to be in the industry one day. But I just didn't know what exactly I wanted to do in the industry. So I was like, what am I going to do? So I tried this out in April of last year. And I was like, oh, well, well, I'm still doing this. So I'm so a shy little girl in a small town, but nothing has changed. But for, so like 40 episodes later, I'm still doing this. So what's that's it? amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's seriously better than that? Like shy gr girl, small town, like how is that even possible? And like, I just think it's crazy. Like, for me, that I'm actually a shy girl, independent, anxious, suppressed girl, starting your own podcast. Like, I, so I, I still think it's crazy, but I still can't believe I'm actually doing this in the first place. You know what I mean? But it's awesome that you stepped out of your comfort zone to do it, you know? Like, yeah. that's very brave of you, and I feel like a lot of girls your age might be too scared, and it's really impressive that not only did you step out of your comfort zone but you've been so consistent with it yeah for sure so um throughout your platform you'd love to bring out like positivity why is it kind of important for you to share that throughout your platform and basically throughout the world basically i'm sorry it it uh delayed a bit can you repeat that please oh yeah so throughout your platform you basically love to bring out positivity why is it kind of important for you to share that throughout your platform and like throughout the world so one reason that I love to share positivity and different things is because I also am somebody who has struggled with depression and anxiety and I've been through a lot of stuff mental health wise and there's been a lot of times in my life where I've been very embarrassed by that fact but it's like any other illness you know we've just put so much stigma around it and so I like to talk about mental health and and spin it in a positive way um it my music sounds very sad but the reason is like when I sat down it's like my therapy so <clears throat> sometimes I think it's good to address how you're feeling and get it out and then once it's out you feel better and then you can start to be positive again once you get the bad out 
you can, it's kind of like when you drain a wound, when a wound gets infected, you need to get the bad stuff out so mm -hmm. that you can heal. Yeah. And um, that's kind of how my music is for me. Uh, it's like a way to get all the negativity out and hopefully um, other people can listen and be like, yeah, I felt like this too. I'm not alone. Like um, I can grow and I can get better. And then when people talk to me, I feel like I'm a pretty positive person <laughs> because I get the bad stuff out in my music. Yeah, seriously. That's how I am. Like, I always, always kind of felt like I was always pretty ashamed of myself for dealing with anxiety and depression. I was kind of embarrassed to admit it to people. That I always happened to myself and my family. That I was like, I would never mention that I have anxiety to my friends or people that I'm starting to talk to because, like, I just felt embarrassed. Like, I felt like I felt like people would make fun of me for who I was. Like, I basically grew up with it since I was a toddler. So I was like, that nothing. And plus, I have people in my family I have anxiety and stuff, so kind of battled down on me. And so I, I was always kind of pretty ashamed to um, having anxiety, depression. I was kind of embarrassed to kind of admit it to people, and depending on who the person is. But um, like, it's something that everyone battles with, especially like during quarantine, everyone battles anxiety or depress depression in some type of way. In any yeah. Way. And so, like, that's how I am with the podcast guy. Like, usually all my feelings are, like, I'm open. Like, I, I've never been this open, like, in my entire life on this podcast. <laughs> I've never been this open. But, like, this, like, podcast, like, basically, I'm oh, like, all negative positives out. This, uh, when people come up to me, like, you're like, hi, why are you so positive today? I'm like, oh, well, I just let all my feelings out yesterday. So, that, that's the point of this. So, I guess it's like, the same deal breaker, for sure. Nice, yeah. And so you recently came out with a song called The Show. What kind of inspired you to write that song? So some of my music comes from personal experience. Some songs I write as stories, and they have bits and pieces of my own personal experience. But this song is a song I wrote. Um, I'm sure, like, you've seen this or maybe even experienced this, like, you know, when you're at that, like, preteen age and everything is weird and, like, everyone is awkward, but sometimes you feel more so awkward than other people. And then there's this whole, everybody starts to date and get into these, like, little relationships. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen this, but some relationships, it's like, the guy and the girl have this phone relationship. Oh. And then, and then in real life, they're, like, super awkward, and they don't, like, act like they're together, even though they are together on the phone. Yeah. That's what the show is about. It's talking about how you put on a show in front of other people because you don't want the relationship to fully be known. Um, and I wrote it because, like, I could relate to that when I was younger, and then I'm sh I've seen a bunch of my friends going through that, so I wanted to write something that would hopefully people can resonate with and be like, oh my gosh, I've, I've been through that. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I actually have friends in the same exact way that gone through that, actually. So that basically, yeah. I totally relate on that. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, anyone that you look up to as a singer-songwriter or just kind of in general? Yes. So I have a lot of different people that I look up for, look up to for different reasons and different things. Like some of my big musical inspirations, it's, I want to say like, there's some there are people I look up to musically and people that I I want to learn from because it's very sad what happened to them. When it like Amy Winehouse and Kurt Cobain, which is the lead singer of Nirvana, like musically I love their music. I love their rawness and their ability to write these song lyrics that really express how they're feeling. But as humans you know like it breaks my heart because back then you know mental illness was not talked about like it is today yeah. and we lost both of those artists very tragically and that's something that like I I think that their art is amazing but also like I want to be able to learn from their journeys unfortunately like I can't even imagine how much great music we would have today if we hadn't lost them so soon. Yeah, for sure. Back then, like basically early 2000s, 90s, how like the best music 
even in my eternally opinion, they had like the best music ever in our gender generation. And mental health was basically no one really talked about as the time grew until maybe the like last maybe three years that people started talking about it. But like mental health is something that's very important. Definitely people should talk about. Like people think they're not worth it, but they are. I actually felt that way over the last couple of years. I felt unworth it, like unwanted and this kind of, it, what I'm saying, that's just so funny, pretend I'm not there. Like, that's kind of how I always felt as a person growing up. And so, yeah, as a twin, I'm a twin sister. So I always kind of felt that with my brother being, like, a little, I'm, like, under him. Like, I'm always kind of in the out spotlight. I will probably work it for it. And so, like, I just know, i never seen people like me. They always kind of left me out of things and everything. And, like, I, like, it's been really tough. My, my, my childhood is kind of ch- tough a little bit. But um, with anxiety and depression, like between those two things so I battled with. But, like Ellen Pompeo is someone that I love and adore the most. Like so, when I, as a, like a podcaster, um, have you watched like, Grey's Anatomy? Or I've seen like a couple of episodes, but I'm not like familiar with the storyline. If that makes sense. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, she plays a uh, Meredith Grey in Grey's Anatomy. And so she started her own podcast late last year, and I listened to every episode, and I was like, okay, I want to be Ellen Pompeo right now. Like, she's such, I can't, I really have no words for Ellen Pompeo. She's amazing. Like, there, there need to be more people kind of like her. Like, she's amazing. That, she's a badass person. Like, she's someone that I want to be. Like, someone I really want. She's very... Um, open, very like sassy, very kind of open and wants to get things done. And I was like, once I kind of became a fan of her, I was like, I want to be her one day. I want to be her. Aww. So and I always kind of want to be, and she's like open and always tells the truth. And I was like, okay, I'm going to grow and be like that. Like, there's, she's one of those people that I was like, I'm like, okay, there's, I can go on about it. Like, she's one of those people. But seriously, like, there's a, like, mental health has basically been a toll for everyone. Everyone has been through their battles and stuff, yeah. and everyone has anxiety in some type of way, even though they might not battle it a lot with other people, they might have not the same journey as other people, but everyone battles anxiety and depression basically the same exact way, basically. Yeah, that's very, very true. It is um, a natural human response and experience and I'm just thankful that like people aren't afraid people aren't as afraid to talk about it anymore because you know you should feel normal if you're going through something especially with how crazy the world has been lately um I'm just glad that we can talk about it come together and heal together you know we have ways to communicate and ways to talk um so I really I like that (laughs) Absolutely. So what is some advice for younger generations that like to become like a singer songwriter one day? So advice that I would give is to believe in yourself, even when it gets hard, because that's something that I've definitely struggled with. Like, it's not hard for me to write the songs. I don't mean that in like a, in a prideful way or like a, that part is something that's just that is who I am. Like, that's just naturally going to come out of me. I love it. It's, I, I get joy from that. But that's not the only aspect to being a singer songwriter. You have to be able to, in some ways, sell yourself, like um, market yourself. And for me, that is very, very hard and difficult. I I'm more of an introvert and I could be alone all day writing songs with my cat and be like the happiest person in the world. But then you tell me to get on social media and start trying to sell myself and get people to listen to the songs. And I'm like, but I'm scared. Yeah, I'm the same exact way. I'm the same way. Really? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm always in my room working on the podcast. I'm currently writing a book right now that I'm working oh. on. So I'm currently working on all my book on my free time and stuff. And so I'm currently basically in my room 24 hours a day up until like midnight, currently writing and editing and proofreading. Like th- that's how I am. Like I love being by myself watching TV, like listening to music, whatever. I'm like that person that loves being alone. 
And I don't know mm-hmm. why that is, but I just love being alone, quiet, listening to music. Kind of, it's like relaxing for me to get my work done and kind of ideas. And so I'm like the same exact way. Like, so I'm really, um, I can totally relate. True introverts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So the final question for the interview is when you're writing a song, do you usually focus on the music first or the lyrics? It depends on the song. Sometimes, um, well, okay, so every song I have to, the first thing is have inspiration. So that is honestly the hardest part because once you have a piece of the puzzle, it's easy to like build on top of that, but it's coming up with the initial piece, like the ideas. So I get ideas from honestly, like all different things, like my own life experience, reality TV experience from my friends when they tell me, you know, things about their life that they've gone through. My sister is a big muse of mine. Like she tells me a bit of her life story and I write a lot of songs based on her, um, like what she's gone through. And, but so when it comes to like actually sitting down and writing, um, it really just depends on the song. Sometimes it's like a melody that comes in my head. Um, sometimes it's the lyrics. Sometimes I set up piano at the piano when I just start playing and then lyrics start to come to my head. But yeah, inspiration is definitely the hardest part and yeah. the part you have to come up with first. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I'm currently writing the book, like my book I'm currently writing, like the inspiration is like the hardest part for me as well. When I'm currently writing something, I'm like, okay, like I'm not getting inspiration. Then while I'm not working, while I'm trying to take a nap or, nap or something, while I'm not focusing on it, I'm like, the ideas and stuff. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, I'm, inspiration's coming to me while I'm not even focusing on it. And so I'm like, I, I just it. get up and start typing it. This don't sleep at all. And so like, it is inspiration is like the hardest part for me, even though like there's a show that really inspired me to write a book was the truth about the Harry Cabrera affair. I don't know if you ever heard of it or watched it. It's no, I haven't. Them seeing it's about these two writers. This guy goes to jail, and so like this guy's for like like dating like a fifteen year old girl or something. Like I don't want to give the backstory up a little bit. Spoilers. But he's a writer and he wrote a book about this fifteen year old girl. He was seeing. It's a little crazy story, but basically, you know, but he initially wrote a book about his life and inspirations and all those things. I'm like, okay, I need, I want to write a book right now. And this kind of inspired me to grab a book. So, if I need inspiration, I write see you that show. If you haven't seen that show, I totally recommend It's really, really good. It's on um, Prime Video, I think. So, I totally nice. recommend it. What was the name again? Uh, the Truth About the Harry Bear Affair. The truth about the Hera Cavera f- affair. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah no, I'll so definitely check that out. Whenever I need inspiration, I usually go to watch Ash on the okay, this will probably give me ideas for writing and things that come up in my head. But um, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It means so much. It was so great to talk to you. You're amazing at what you're doing. Seriously, you're amazing. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It means so much. Thank you so, so much for having me. It was a pleasure getting to talk to you and being interviewed by you. And I'm honestly like, I think it's so cool that you're doing this at such a young age and um, stepping out of your comfort zone at such a young age. I'm also an introvert, so I know it's not easy, but I'm very impressed by you. And I feel honored to get to come on here and talk to you. Thank you so much. It means so much. Thanks so much. And we'll definitely speak soon for sure. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Of course. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. You too.